Good boy, Benny. Thank you. Yeah, you're a good boy. Are you ready to play your new game? Well, not new game, but are you ready to find it? Yeah. All right, come here. Thank you. Stay. Good boy, Benny. All right, we are going to be playing Find It on um, a moderately hard difficulty. This isn't the hardest, as you can see. There's a fair amount of uh, overgrowth um, in this area, but there's not too much. It could be worse by far, but this is going to be one of the... Uh, uh, examples of difficulty levels in this game for you. Hey, Benny. I just thought I'd show you what were you think for treats. Benny, sit. Thank you. Sorry, there you go. Um, I'll try to give you a good enough look. Uh, there's some duck seat, some cookies, some kibble, some marrow bones, some just various different things. Some uh, Timbit, you know, different things. Uh, that he'll have to look for the scent of. Now, when I start the game, just so Benny knows what smells he's looking for, I let him, uh, get a sniff of the bin, or whatever it is. Sit. Good boy. Ah, right, there we go. Stay. And our duck foot, stay. Some biscuits. Didn't work that one well at all. Um, I'm doing well here. Let's see if I can't do a bit better. There we go. That's a good throw. Man Earth, come here. You gotta wait. Get over here. Come on. Thank you. Good boy. Do another handful here, Kibble. Stay. Alright, wait, go find it. Yeah, that was my mix up of the command. Find it, get it. Good boy, take it. <laughs> Thankfully, I managed to give the hand signal, so. He understood what I meant, even if, uh, I couldn't get the, uh, commands right. And, of course, you see he's, uh, searching for the different scents and, uh, finding what he wants. Uh, he's got a good scent on that chicken foot, on that duck foot. And I expect he'll find that in any second now. Is that a good sh duck foot? <laughs> Mouthful of grass at the same time because it's <laughs> grass is so tall, but he'll survive. Where is it? Good boy. Incidentally, you can uh, you can incorporate obedience and distance work um, in this kind of game by uh, instead of having them find it and eat it, um, send them and have them sit beside anything they find that they want. Um, or down, or whatever you want as your, uh, practice. Um, and, uh, wait for them to, and have them wait for you to tell them that they can take it, or play with it, or whatever. Um, it's a bit more controlled version of the game. Um, 
in this case, I, uh, I do that kind of work, um, in addition and elsewhere, so, um, right now we're just doing the fun version of the game, but, uh, there is definitely ways that you can incorporate all sorts of other different training into these games. Um, pretty much the sky's the limit, it's... You're only limited by how much creativity you have and ingenuity you have in terms of ways to communicate uh, what you're trying to uh, communicate to the dog and motivate them that there's a legitimate reason to do whatever it is you are asking of them. And most dogs will happily uh, jump at the idea. I mean, most dogs, they're just bored. They're their life is so boring and so inactive and so disengaged manners. You're going to find it that uh, for them it's just it's pretty sad. They mean well and they want to do stuff with you and they want to be engaged with their pack and have fun and do all sorts of cool things, but their owners just leave them in their house all day, and if they're lucky, occasionally let them in the backyard or take them for a walk. Now, there's so much you can do with whatever little time you have with your animal. There's really no reason at all that a dog cannot be cared for the way they need to in a way that adequately meets their needs with whatever little bit of time you uh, have available. If you really don't have enough time, then you shouldn't have gotten a pet in the first place and you should rehome that animal. Because if you're not prepared to put the time and energy and effort in, then it's not. Sorry guys, uh, it looks like I might have lost you there for a split second. I apologize, I'm doing my best here. Um, but, uh, Benny, are you going to find it? Anyways, yeah. If you can't give the animal the time and the effort and energy that they need so that they can have their needs met, you shouldn't have, and you should not continue to uh, keep an animal in those kind of conditions. Um, if you're not if you're not going to be able to or you get something and you find that you are not able to the humane thing to do is to rehome that animal with people who will provide um, and it's your job to make sure that you find somewhere where that animal is going to be in a good home and get their needs met and the people who you are giving them to um, are responsible enough to and are capable of uh, providing for that animal's needs. You're already screwed up by getting the animal or at least setting up a bad situation where you now have an animal that needs a home that you're unable to provide adequately for. Don't screw up further by giving it to someone who won't be able to provide. Um, you don't know the damage that it does to rescue dogs to... Hey Ben, is that good? Yeah, you don't, you, you clearly don't understand the damage and trauma and harm it does to a rescue dog to have to lose their home over and over again and have their pack abandon them like that, you know. Well, yes, dogs can generally handle the uh, one or two uh, odd uh traumatic events, if, if their life is filled with that kind of instability, you're going to have major problems, you're going to see major behavioral issues, you're not going to be able to handle it, and uh, it's really unfair to that animal. So, you know, it's not hard to do, there's lots of ways that you can engage your animal, but you need to find a way to meet them on their terms. You know, they're not, they're not the big-brained human you are. You're the one who needs to figure out how to meet their needs. You're the one who chose to got, get the animal, so. 
it's on you to do these things. Is it good, Benny? If my clients who have some of the most extreme disabilities are capable of doing what's necessary to meet those do dog's needs, despite their extreme limitations, then I can guarantee that you are capable of getting off your butt and, you know, finding ways to engage your animal better than you're doing now. I'm not saying you're a monster or you are evil or bad, but you really need to respect the animal that you have decided that you want in your life and is supposed to be your friend. Um, you wouldn't treat your friend the way uh, a lot of people treat their animals, and if you did, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> I mean, if your idea of friendship is locking them alone by themselves for the majority of their existence, and uh, you think that's a good idea, then I don't, yeah. That's no friend. So, but anyways, like I said, this is a wonderful game. It, now this level is probably more complex than uh, some dogs would be able to handle. Um, if your dog st doesn't have much in the way of scenting capabilities, I wouldn't bother um, going to these kind of extremes. Um, unless they can scent, uh, it's not fair that they can't uh, have any way to really focus down on if there's no visual signal. Um, so, be aware of that. On the other hand, you know, if you've got a blind dog, then you don't really have much to concern about that. Just make sure you're not frustrating the dog and you should be fine. If the dog's showing signs of extreme frustration with the activity, then maybe the activity's not for them or you've gone too fast or too far, too quickly, whatever, but... Um... The majority of dogs should be able to handle this kind of level of the game um, with a little bit of practice once they know what the point of the game is. Because even, you know, some of the less um, specifically dedicated uh, scent dogs still have phenomenal scent ability and can usually, within a certain degree or extent, um, be able to master even this kind of uh, difficulty. The difficulty above this would be something I would probably reserve for scent hounds. Um, unless I see the dog particularly likes the game and is showing some talent in the game. But, uh, you know, you know your dog and make your decisions based on that. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, Ben. Such a good boy, eh? So many interesting things, eh? I know. Yeah, I know your puppy there. I know. Yeah, I knew. He okay or... Oh, he's a big suck if you want to see. Hello. I know, Ben. There, there you go. One second. Just be aware, I just dropped my cigarette, so I don't want the dog to step on it. I'll move over it so they can't reach it. Benny, Nana. There you go. Yeah. I know. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Yeah, I just rolled on top of the cigarette so that the dog doesn't risk stepping on it. I just dropped, I dropped it and it's hard to get, so. <laughs> See you later. You have a good day. Come on, bub. I know. I know you got to see a friend. Yeah, you got to see a friend while you play the game. Oh, fuck me. Oh. Anyways, you gonna find it? Where is it?
that's just his cue, like I said, to uh, begin the game and search. Um, but you don't. The command's not anything magic or special. The dog didn't start out understanding what find it meant. He uh, got taught that find it meant go play this game. But uh, you can use whatever commands, say language choices you want. That's not anything special. Indeed, if you've already started trying to do these kind of things and you're struggling, you should pick a uh, different command than whatever you've been using so that you can start fresh because you probably taught the dog to ignore the command up until this point. Um, but when you, uh, you're starting fresh, it shouldn't matter either way. Is that good? Where is it? You gonna find it? Is that good? Anyways, uh, pretty soon we're gonna start another game, Man Earth. But, uh, at least for the moment, we'll let him quickly finish this up, and then, uh, we'll start another game. Um, and, uh, the next game we'll do another, um, we'll be at a harder level, um, to showcase, again, the, uh, different ways you can play this game. But, um, you know, after this level, be aware that you should have some practice, or at least a dog with significant scenting ability and um, at least a little bit of obedience training under your belt before you start playing these off-leash or um, distance games and training. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, we'll see you around. Hey Ben, is that good? You get it all? You all done? Hey Bobby. There may be uh, one or two bits left, but worst case is the birds or the uh, squirrels will eat it. <laughs> but I think he's found them all. Hey, Ben, are you a good boy? Yeah. Let's go get you some water. <laughs>